Hello and welcome back to In the Kitchen with Matt. I am your host, Matt Taylor. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make a red velvet cake covered in a nice cream cheese frosting. Oh yeah. I had a request to make a red velvet cake, so here we go, that's what we're gonna do. Really easy to do, simple ingredients. If I can do it, you can do it. Before we move on, make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, so you'll be notified every time I have a new video. All right. Let's get baking. First, what we want to do is we are going to preheat the oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 176 Celsius. Now we're gonna take our softened room temperature butter. This is one half cup of unsalted butter. Down below in the description, I will post all the ingredients and the amounts. And then one and one half cups of white granulated sugar. And then with a hand mixer or a stand mixer, let's go ahead and beat this together until it's nice and combined. All right, there we go. And you can see how it's really pale yellow. Now we want to add in our eggs, one at a time, two large eggs. That looks good for the first one. We'll get that second one in there. Okay, great. And then with our spatula, come in here and scrape the sides. I am using my silicone marbled spatula, which is really cool. If you like the look of this spatula, I'll put a link down below where you can grab it. It's pretty neat. All right, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our cocoa powder and you really wanna sift this with a sieve or with a sifter. And the reason why I see you have these little chunks left, just push those down with your finger. And we'll go ahead and mix this. I've also seen people mix their cocoa powder in with their vanilla extract and oil. You could probably just sift it all together with your dry ingredients as well. That is nice and mixed. I'm going to set this aside a little bit. And now with our buttermilk, let's go ahead and add in our vanilla extract. This is one teaspoon of vanilla extract. One teaspoon of our vinegar. Go ahead and give that a mix. And now we want to add in our oil. Give that a mix. And now let's add in our Food coloring. We're going to use quite a bit of food coloring. We'll probably use a couple tablespoons of food coloring. See where that gets us. Oh yeah, that's looking good. And the color will change a little bit once we add it to our other mixture. So I'm going to just add a little bit more. Maybe two and a half tablespoons, something like that. Doesn't have to be exact. Or if you want to do a blue cake, if you want to do a blue velvet cake, <laughs> you can add in blue. I have two and a half cups of all-purpose flour that I ran through my sifter. You could use cake flour also. And then I have one teaspoon of salt, table salt, and one teaspoon of baking soda. And let's just whisk this up. Great. And now, over here at our main cake batter mixture, main bowl, let's take half of our buttermilk mixture and put it in there. Let's take half of our flour, put it in there, and mix. Great, and let's come in and scrape those sides. Awesome. Let's go ahead and add in the rest of our mixture. Use your spatula to get all of it out. Add in that rest of that flour. And the buttermilk and the vinegar is gonna react with that baking soda to help give our cake a, a nice lift and nice texture. Looking good. Another scrape of the sides. Oh yeah. 
All right, let's go ahead and take off these beaters and we'll just clean those off as best as we can with our spatula or spoon or fork, whatever, whatever you want to use to clean these off. I won't advocate using your tongue, but I may or may not have done that on occasion. You know, the whole raw egg thing, you know, people get worried about with good reason. Of course, growing up, I was never worried about it, so I always lick the beaters. <laughs> Just give it a nice stir again with your spatula. All right, this cake batter is ready to go. All right, now I have two nine inch cake pans. You could use smaller cake pans if you want, like eight inch or seven inch or whatever. And then I use shortening around the sides and on the bottom, I put a little piece of parchment paper on the bottom and then used flour on the sides. It's very common also to use cocoa powder um, to dust the pan, whatever you would like to do. All right, this is a little bit overkill what I did, but I wanna make sure that my cake doesn't stick in there. And now we wanna do two equal parts in here. And so I usually try to just do some of both at each time here, some like that, come over here. Some in there. Look at that nice red color. Isn't that awesome? Just get all the batter out that you can. Great. And then just run in here with your cake, spatula. Let's just move this around. And if you just kind of hold it there and turn it, that's another technique you can use. Then it'll just spread it out pretty nicely for you. All right, and here we go. Now we're gonna bake these in the oven. Once again, 350 degrees Fahrenheit, 176 Celsius for about 22 to 28 minutes until when you poke it with a toothpick, the toothpick comes out clean onto that step. All right, they came out of the oven, took right about 28 minutes. Look how beautiful they look. Nice deep red color, awesome. Let's go ahead and just let them sit in their pans for about 10 minutes and then we will remove them and put them on a wire rack to cool completely. All right, it's been about 10 minutes. They're still a little warm. So I'm gonna go ahead and take them out. Just flip them over like that. Take off my parchment paper and lay the cake down just like that. They came right out of the pans. Super duper easy, boom. And that's why you take the time to grease your pans and use some parchment paper. Might be a little overkill but it does the job. And I love these Wilton pans, these non-stick Wilton cake pans. I'll put a link down below in case you wanna pick these up. They're really nice. Now, while our cake is cooling the rest of the way, let's go ahead and make our cream cheese frosting. I have 16 ounces of softened room temperature cream cheese here. I'm gonna add in one teaspoon of vanilla extract. And then I'm gonna add in my one half cup of unsalted butter that's been softened, and that'll do the trick. All right, so with our hand mixer or stand mixer, let's go ahead and beat these two together until they're really well blended and then until it's a little pretty light, probably um, three to three minutes or so. Come in here and scrape those sides. All right, until it's nice and smooth, about like that. Now let's go ahead and start adding in our powdered sugar or, or confectioner sugar. It's about four cups worth. I'm just gonna do a little bit at a time though. Probably about a cup at a time. And And then just keep doing that until all of your powdered sugar is incorporated. About like that is pretty good, pretty awesome. Let's go ahead and take out our beaters. And then these you definitely can lick. <laughs> now we get to decorate our cake. And I just have a cake pedestal here. I'm gonna set my frosting aside. I'm gonna grab one of these. Well, a lot of times I'll put down a piece of parchment paper, like a round one, I'll cut one out and put it down. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and put this right there on the pedestal itself right there in the middle. And you can put a dollop of frosting down so the cake doesn't move on you. I'm not gonna do that this time. And the cake is pretty level as it is, but I wanna run my 
bread knife here and just kind of level it a little more. And it's up to you. You don't have to level the cake at all and it'll still wind up being fine. Grab my spatula and I'm going to use this piece for later. Now we want to grab some of our frosting and go in here on the top. And if you want your frosting to be thicker, go ahead and add in some more powdered sugar. And then let's go ahead and put this top layer right on there. And then you may or may not want to level off this top piece. I'm not going to at this time, but you could, especially if you were gonna do fondant and you wanted everything to be like really nice and symmetrical, you would wanna level this off if you were gonna do fondant on the top. There are a variety of tools that we can use to put frosting on the sides. Um, there's a thing called like a cake smoother or a cake comb that you could use. A lot of times it'll have a flat side and if you want the flat side and you don't have one, you could just use your fondant smoother if you want. Or you can come in here with your, um, if you have a dough cutter, and use that. Or just use your cake spatula. Let's start with that. You can also cool down your frosting first before using it, just so it's easier to work with. And I'm just going to pour over the sides here. We want to get all those sides. This frosting is a little bit runny. That's okay, we're gonna make it work. All right, now at this point, I'm gonna put it in the refrigerator and let it chill for about 30 minutes and then we will finish off the with the decorations. All right, I took it out of the fridge and the frosting has firmed up a little bit. And now what I wanna do is take my little cake top that I cut off before and we wanna crumble this up. Also, one thing you could do is you could take like your heart a heart-shaped uh, cookie cutter, and you can cut out a heart-shaped piece of cake there, which would look pretty cool. Yeah, that looks really, really neat. And then what we wanna do with this is we wanna crumble this up, kinda like we were gonna make uh, cake pops. We wanna crumble this up uh, really fine, and then we'll put it on the edges. And make sure your hands are clean, of course. All right, cool. And then now what we want to do is we want to take some of these cake crumbs. You can just throw them on there or just lightly press them on there. You don't have to put these on if you don't want. Again, it's your cake. Decorate it however you want. And we can leave it like that or we could try to um, kind of clean off the edges a little bit. Just make it a little more clean. Got a nice homemade look to it, right? <laughs> anyway, go ahead and put that in the refrigerator and let it sit for about two hours before you serve it. All right, now it's time to cut into this. You almost don't wanna mess it up. That's the danger of putting something nice in the middle, but we need to cut off a piece. Go down the middle here. And there we go. There you have it, red velvet cake. Really easy to do. If I can do it, you can do it. If you wanna learn how to make chocolate cake, check out this video right over here. If you wanna learn how to make cake pops, check out this video right below me and make sure to subscribe in the corner. Take care, time for me to dive into this. Oh yeah, mm mm mm. Mm, mm.